<laughs> you know, I'm trying to get a beat on this. Today's show, I was going to call it Let's Get Physical or maybe Let's Stay Physical because it's about physical audio formats, you know, like LP, CD, and for some of you, tape. But I'm really thinking about the future. Is there a future for physical audio formats in a world where more and more people are streaming music? So there's no physicality to the sound anymore, no physical formats for many music listeners. And is that, is that the path that we're all going to be on eventually that LPs, CDs, tapes, all that's going to go away and there'll be no more physical media? That's certainly possible. And you know what? Maybe even likely, certainly if you're a pessimist, if you're a pessimist audiophile, that might seem likely. But the reason that I don't, I have some hope that physical formats will continue and get even better than what we have right now is because people like stuff, despite claims otherwise. People like collecting things. They collect bottle caps, they collect all kinds of crap, running shoes, guns, everything. They collect all sorts of things. Why not the music that you carry through your life, the music that you were listening to when you were a kid and when you were in your 20s and 30s and 40s and all of that music, well, some of that music, is precious to you and you want to keep it nearby and you'd like to hold it in your hand and anyway, you know what I'm saying? Physical media has its place. You know, it's funny when the CD came out in 1982, 40 years ago, everyone was saying that the LP's days were numbered and turntables and cartridges and toner, this is all going to be over in a matter of years. It didn't work out that way. So predicting the future can be pretty tricky. But I'm going to try. You know, uh, I, I, I have talked many times about my LP collection and my CD collection and how much it means to me. And though I'm constantly culling both collections, LPs and CDs, that I'm getting rid of ones that I don't listen to and getting new ones all the time, I buy a lot of music new and old. When I put out an LP or a CD that I bought 20 or 30 years ago and it brings back memories, not just the sound of the music, but just looking at the jewel case or looking at the LP, whatever, I have this connection to the music. It's beyond the sound of the music, just having it in my life there. And I own it. No one's going to ever take it away from me. Well, I hope not. So that's all part of it. But anyway, you know, thinking about future formats, will they be analog or digital or some other storage medium, record medium and storage medium? You know, I think there needs to be another way to record sound than analog or digital. Because I think what we've done is recording it in such a way that it is just two-dimensional. Now, in stereo and even in multi-channel formats, I remember the days of quadraphonic, but 5.1 or 7.1, the music always, it, it sounds too flat to me. It doesn't have enough dimensionality compared to the sound of real acoustic guitar in your, you know, right in front of you, right? or a band in front of you. I have never heard a recording in mono or stereo or in multi-channel that really sounds fully there, fully dimensional. I think recording with microphones in however many channels can spread the sound around the room and create envelopment that it can do, surround can do. But in terms of this more dimensionality, more substance to the sound, more that you could, it's right there in front of you for real? No, that has not happened, not yet. And maybe we need something beyond analog or digital. I don't know what that even means really in terms of what could it be, because it might be some version of analog or digital. But my point is we are not there yet. So here's a prediction for the future. There will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. So I do have a couple of ideas for formats that are not exactly revolutionary, but things that I think are achievable in the near term. And number one on my list, because it's my list, is 
truly flat records, truly flat LPs. Because all LPs, even if they're not visibly warped, if you look at the, the surface as it's turning around, you'll see it's wobbling around, right? It's not really flat. <laughs> And therefore, the stylus in the groove is going up and down over this wavering surface. If an LP was truly flat, I think that would actually make them sound significantly better. And in related to that is if the whole of the record, it seems like a pretty small ask, but if the whole of a record was really, really, really 100% exactly in the center of the record, that too would make records sound significantly better. Because as it stands now, they could be off by some tiny fraction of a millimeter, but that means that the stylus is wavering back and forth as the record's going round and round. If you know, if you catch my drift here, right? So flat records, records with holes exactly in the center, and here's another one that is on my wish list for vinyl, is truly quiet records with absolutely zero record surface noise and that they were uh, wear free. They did not wear and get noisier as you play them. Now, having said that, having said that, I have records that I've played for 50 freaking years that are reasonably quiet right now. So it's not like that's a big roadblock for me personally. But sure, if it's on my wish list about records, I want flat records, records with the hole exactly in the center so there would be minimal wow and flutter or no wow and flutter. And yes, records that were 100% quiet. That would be really, really nice. So the next one on my list is an optical disc for audio. Now, some of you might remember, some of you older people might remember, that LaserDisc was a format in the 80s for video. And it struggled along for a couple of years, but it didn't really go anywhere. And then DVD eventually killed it. But LaserDisc, though it looked like a giant CD, a 12-inch CD, it, the video portion of the disc was 100% analog. FM, modulated signal, was on that disc. And I'm thinking, you know, in the 40-plus years since that format was invented, if we revisited that format and made it like a high-resolution audio format, that would be, again, wear-free, because it was optical, it would be read by a laser. And what is the potential of that format now, if it was basically reintroduced? What, where could it take us? And I think it would, might have a lot of promise. So that's, that's, a, that's a potential one, an optical disc format for audio. So here's an, I just want you to consider another aspect of this about the why physical media should persist, especially for, for people who love music, music lovers, is that when you buy an LP or a CD, a much higher percentage of the sale of that disc goes to the band themselves than when you stream that music. I mean, it's a gigantic difference in terms of how much more money they make from the sale of a CD or an LP than when you stream that album. It's not even close. And the other thing that's rarely talked about, we, we've talked about fairness and streaming and all that stuff for years, the, we audiophiles have. But what's almost never discussed are the people who write the songs, the composers who are even more screwed by streaming than the musicians who play on the record. And again, they are in such better shape when you buy that music as an LP or a CD or a physical format. So, you know, I mean, bands basically make music now to promote their tour so that you will go and see them. So they have to play live, do concerts to make any kind of a living for in music. It used to be the exact opposite, that back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, bands toured to sell their records. You know, they didn't make that much money. You could see the biggest acts in the world at uh, the Fillmore East for literally two or three dollars. You could see Led Zeppelin, you could see Jimi Hendrix for three bucks. But um, you had, you know, if you loved their music, you bought their LPs, which were four and five dollars. So they were making way more money from the sales of their physical media than seeing them in concert. 
So the, their, their sources of income flip from the old days to the new days. So bands have to keep touring to make any income, which really hurt them during the lockdown period, by the way, in case you didn't hear about that. <laughs> anyway, it's tricky. So anyway, physical media has extra value for the people who make the art itself, that is the music. You know, also kind of like I was just saying about vinyl, that we need flatter records and records with holes exactly in the center and quieter vinyl. I could apply that same idea to tape. We need much, much, much higher quality tape itself, the tape itself. In other words, quieter tape, tape with better frequency response, more durable tape that would uh, not have the oxide fall off and flake as it ages. Just higher quality tape and quieter tape with better signal to noise ratio. And along with that, a new generation of tape machines, of reel-to-reel -reel machines and cassettes, and who knows, maybe even eight tracks that could take advantage of this. Now, all of this is predicated on the idea that we like physical stuff. And boy, oh boy, when you talk to people who, who have recently invested in reel-to-reel -reel tape machines, they just love it. They just love the physicality of playing reel-to-reel. -reel. They love looking at the, you know, the wheels turning as it's playing, threading the machines. All of that, they just dig it. And you know what? I, I really have, have a newfound respect for these people because they're going against all the odds. There's so little music that you can buy, you know, the tapes themselves that you can buy from real to real machines, and yet they still are very, very passionate about that format. So what if there was a, a renewed interest in making new tape formulations and new tape machines that could bring up the standards of these recordings to a new higher level. I want to return to the idea of having a completely original audio format to record and play back and what that could possibly mean. And one that would be sold as a physical format, not a better streaming way of streaming music, but a, a physical format because people like stuff. They line their walls with the stuff. It says something about who you are, the music that you love, that you've curated over your entire lifetime. And if there was a new, vastly better sounding, more musical, more real, more the, the juice of listening to music was captured in this format and played back in this format, uh, I think more people would get involved in it. Because as it is, I'm not claiming that physical formats will ever replace streaming or the, certainly the convenience of it and the cost savings of it. This is not about that. This is about people who are passionate about music in their life and they want to own it and cherish it. That's what this is for. And that's all true and it exists right now, but if we had better formats, uh, it would just bring more of us into this hobby of being passionate audiophiles. Oh, I just want to make a quick little addendum here about the SACD format. So not DSD, no, that's a streaming download format. I'm talking about physical media today, remember? So this is my Rolling Stones SACD singles collection. Physical media, three discs. Anyway, what about updating the format to do, let's say, 256 or higher. Yeah, what about that? That It seems like it could be possible to fit that much information on the disc. I know the players out there won't handle it. Maybe some of the decks would, but the point is there's a lot of people that love the format itself, SACD. I'm not trying to diss it here. I'm just saying I'm not one of those people. I have lots of them, but it's not something I think about as I'm putting my head on the pillow every night. But a lot of people love the format. Why not make a much higher quality SACD format? I think that would have potential. Again, it has a base out there. Anyway, just throwing that two cents in. Speaking of being passionate, yes, it is now time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Today's system comes from Sotiri. He lives in South Africa. His speakers, I remember these speakers, these are one ohm Apogee scintillas. These are full range planar magnetic speakers made in the US in I think the late 80s or early 90s. They are being driven by a Valve Audio Genesis amplifier, which is made in South Africa. Same for the phono preamp. That company is called 
tube phonic. For digital Soteri is using a Bryston BDA3 and a Cambridge Blu-ray player. His uh, video projector is a top-of-the-line Optoma. Nice going Soteri. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and it's true I am the audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can do it for just a couple of bucks a month uh, and up from there and the top tiers, you and I will have a phone conversation for 15 minutes or so every month and I so enjoy having these conversations. I truly do. I learn a lot from just talking to you people. And if you don't want to do the Patreon, I get it, that's cool. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and hitting that like button for the episodes that you truly enjoy. If you've gotten this far in this episode, chances are you did, so hit the like button right now. <laughs> and with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And i got to say before I say goodbye is I made this episode under some duress because behind this wall, in this next apartment to me, they're redoing the floor and there's some kind of chemical that's just awful that I've been breathing over the course of this episode. For you people, this is, these are the kind of sacrifices I make. I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.